In this video, I'll be making a timber storage bench. Since I moved into this workshop, I've been storing all of my shorter pieces of timber in this metal rack unit and storing it like that wasn't really working well because it was difficult to find things and I've learned that it'd be much better to have the bits stored with the ends of each piece facing forwards, if that makes sense. That's how I had it stored in my old workshop and that worked much better. I also had some longer pieces of timber stored in an upright mobile box and that didn't work too well either, mainly because it splays out all over the place and it isn't very space efficient. So I designed a bench where I could organize all of these pieces by length. The bottom of the unit would have space for short pieces up to about 500 millimeters in length. Then there'd be a middle section where I can store slightly longer pieces up to around 700 millimeters in length and then a top section for the longest pieces up to around 1500 millimeters in length. On top I can create a bit of extra work surface which is always handy and I'm going to pop the whole thing on wheels because putting anything in the workshop on wheels is always useful. Detailed plans of the cut list for this project will be available for a small fee via my Etsy store or for free to my Patreon patrons. So I started to unload the old rack and I'm going to use this in future for storing all of my finishes instead. For this build I'm going to use some melamine. It's not a material that I enjoy using to be honest but it's going to work just fine for what I'm making here and I've got quite a bit of it so this is a good way to use up the pieces that I have. But alternatively you could use 18mm plywood or any other sheet material. First I started ripping the panels to width at the table saw and then I marked up all of the cuts for length based on the dimensions from my drawing. And to do this, I'm going to use my panel cutting sled, which I made in a previous video. Using this in conjunction with a stop block against the fence, and then removing that stop block before each cut allows me to cut consistent size lengths in a safe way. I'm going to be using polyurethane glue on this project rather than the usual PVA that I use mainly because it does a better job at bonding the plastic face of the boards to the chipboard substrate of the board, but also it's less temperature sensitive and because it's cold in my workshop, this is going to dry much quicker. You can find this adhesive in the My Tools section in the description box. It works really well. This glue works best when activated with a bit of moisture, so I used a damp cloth over the glue joints before applying the glue. And then I can start assembling the pieces and here I'm drilling pilot holes with a countersink and adding screws so that I can continue working without having to use clamps and waiting for the glue to dry. Here I'm making the bottom section for the shorter pieces of timber and I need to space these sections equally. Dividing the distance between the two end panels by the number of sections gives me the center point for each divider. So I'm marking them out with a speed square and then I can secure them with screws. I didn't bother adding glue here as the screws will provide enough strength on their own. Next I needed to cut one of the panels down by the thickness of two pieces of the melamine to account for the front and back panels that will be added later. And here I'm using a spacer to position it correctly. So this is my first mistake of the project. Well, maybe not a mistake, but something that could have been improved at the design stage. As the central divider is in line with one of the bottom dividers, I couldn't secure it in place using a normal 90 degree screwed butt joint. So instead I had to drill some pocket holes. This looks pretty ugly, but it doesn't matter in this instance because no one is going to see the screws inside the cabinet. But what would have been a better design would have been to have an odd number of bottom section dividers instead of an even number. That way I could have simply screwed the central divider in from underneath. I've made that correction in my drawings, so if you are interested in making your own, you'll get a better design than the one that I used. Here I'm adding glue so that I can add the next panel on top of the central divider and I can mark up the center of the shelf, drill some holes and then secure it to the central divider and here's where I made my second mistake. I wasn't really having a good day was I? So did you spot the not so deliberate mistake? I accounted for the thickness of the front and back panel 
with the depth of this central divider, but I forgot to do that for the horizontal shelf. So now I can either unscrew this and rip it down to size, but I don't really want to do that because this has got wet glue on it, or I can try and rip these edges off on the track saw, and I think I'm going to give that a go. So here I'm offering up a spacer to line up my track saw track, and then I can cut away the excess. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that I probably didn't do the assembly in the best order. It would have made more sense to add the central divider, then the front and back panels, and then the shelf. I'd recommend doing that if you're building your own one of these, as that would have been a better way to get the placement of the horizontal shelf aligned correctly. But actually after cutting the front and back panels to width of the table saw and then offering them up, doing it the way I did it was fine, I didn't have any issues. To secure the front panel to the shelf, I offered up another spacer to get the shelf positioned correctly, and as I didn't want any screws visible here, I drilled a pilot hole, then drilled that hole to 8mm, and I can then glue in some 8mm dowel. On the back panel though, I really wasn't bothered about the screws being visible, so I used them there. The polyurethane glue that I used froths up and once dry I could come back with a chisel to remove the excess. And I could cut away the excess dowel with my Japanese pull saw and clean that up with a chisel. At this point I put the unit down onto the floor, turned it upside down and then I could add some casters to the bottom. These are from Amazon and I've already used these on a few different units now so you can see that they've got some marks on them but they work great and I'll add a link to these in the accessories section at the My Tools link in the description box. I'm using pan head screws here to secure them in place. The final panels were cut from some off cuts and these were added right at the top and these are just going to be used purely for fastening the worktop down to the unit. So here I'm drilling some pilot holes. This piece of worktop I found recently in a skip and it was almost the perfect length. I just needed to scrape away the old silicon at the back. Then I did a quick jump test. And then I marked up the worktop for length and cut it using the track saw and I'm always surprised at just how cleanly this blade cuts. No chip out whatsoever. I decided to add some trim to the front edges of the unit, mainly just to make them a bit more hard wearing, and I found some thin pieces of sapili that I could use for this. These pieces were already a good width, but I hot glued a sacrificial fence in front of the table saw blade to allow me to safely cut some consistently thin strips that were about five millimeters thick. I can then offer them up, cut them to length, and I secured them with glue and brad nails. Then I gave them a bit of a tickle with some sandpaper, just to ease over any sharp edges. and I applied some boiled linseed oil to pop the grain of the wood and also add a bit more protection. And then I could load it up. I think this is going to work really well. It'll store a lot of wood in a relatively small space. It's a nice efficient design and it gives me another work surface to dump things on which isn't one of my workbenches. So that should help keep them a little clearer. 
You can probably tell this build was on a bit of an off day for me. There were a few mistakes that could have easily been rectified with a bit more planning, but that's just how it goes sometimes. It doesn't really matter too much though, the build was pretty quick. It took about seven hours to complete in total, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. That's all for this one. Please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, you can find a link to that in the description box below where you can get early access to my videos, some exclusive content, free plans and cut lists, including for this project, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching.